As a fan of handheld gaming, I just somehow couldn't get into playing games on mobile as much as I tried. I used to play games like Temple Run, Tap Tap Revolution, Candy Crush, and these days it's more like word games like Wordscapes, but games that I would normally play on a console or a handheld, I just couldn't get into playing on my phone for whatever reason. I think I just miss using buttons way too much and my mind can't wrap around using dual stick-like movements on a touchscreen. So enter the Razer Kishi, the mobile controller that switches your iPhone into a dedicated gaming handheld. Sorry if I'm saying Kishi wrong, but for the sake of this video, the Kishi is also available on Android devices. I have the iPhone version which I pair with my iPhone 12 Pro Max and this thing has pulled me into the world of mobile gaming like nothing ever has. Of course, you do have the option of pairing other Bluetooth controllers to your iOS devices, especially if you want to play on your iPad as well, and it is still a fantastic alternative. But for me personally, I really enjoy handheld gaming. Same reason is why I play with my Nintendo Switch undocked most of the time. It goes without saying that I'm not a tech expert in any way, so please take this review from a casual user's experience using this product. The Kishi attaches to your iPhone via the lightning port, so because it is connected directly instead of through Bluetooth, I find that there is little to no input lag. I also really like that I don't have to worry about battery life on this controller because it does pull power from the phone. I haven't actually noticed much of a difference compared to my regular usage. Not having to mess with Bluetooth connectivity is also a pretty nice plus, I think, because I've paired Bluetooth controllers before that would drop connection and could ruin your gaming experience. On top of that, the Kishi is also in a very nice compact form factor that you can easily throw in your bag and take everywhere with you. Pulling on the two tabs in the back will release the lock and expand the controller so that you can fit the controller around your iPhone. So here is my iPhone and it'll just plug in directly like so and around. And this is what you're left with. Now with the 12 Pro Max especially, you are left with a very hefty device, but I really love the idea of it transforming your smartphone into a gaming handheld. Since most people these days probably has a smartphone that they're using or laying around and not everybody has a dedicated video gaming console. So I do like that it's making video games more accessible for other people. Not that you need a controller to play these games, of course, but if you just want that experience. It is reminiscent to the Switch 2, of course, with the screen in the center and attaching the controllers on the sides. And obviously we love the Switch here, so I can appreciate it for that. <laughs> it features all the buttons that you may expect on a regular modern controller. Your shoulder buttons, your D-pad, the dual joysticks, home button, a menu slash options button, and your ABXY, of course. Though the ABXY configuration on this one is like the Xbox controller instead of the Nintendo Switch, which is just reversed. And with button remapping, you can easily swap what the buttons do if you have maybe, I don't know, muscle memory for pressing certain buttons for certain actions. I have had the Razer Kishi for a good three or so months now, so I feel that I've had a long enough experience with it and I can honestly say that I do love this thing. It's built very well, it feels sturdy and durable, not sponsored by Razer, I wish. <laughs> but I do own a couple other Razer products for my PC and I can say that my experience with the Kishi is exactly like what I expected from a Razer product. I think they're just overall a reliable brand and it does exactly what you need it to. So the buttons are more on the mushy side instead of clicky, if that detail is important to you. I usually like something a bit more clicky, but I don't mind this at all. It's a very comfortable controller and something that it already has done better than the Nintendo Switch are the joysticks. They feel just as solid as the rest of the controller and it hasn't drifted on me yet crossing my fingers, <laughs> but I don't think it's going to. It's priced at 129 Canadian dollars and I think it's about $90 in the US. I could be wrong. I have seen sales on this before as well, so definitely keep an eye out on that if you're not in a rush to grab one. Now for some games that I've enjoyed playing with on the Kishi, I have to mention Apple Arcade, which is Apple's monthly 
game subscription service that gives you access to a constantly growing selection of games. I think they update it weekly, which for $5.99 a month, a price of like a Starbucks drink, <laughs> for me is incredibly worth it, especially if you are a fan of mobile gaming. So it's similar to something like Xbox Game Pass, where you will have access to this huge library of games as long as you have the subscription. It's got a good list of titles now from well-loved older titles, new releases, and even their own Apple Arcade exclusives. Now, I wanted the Kishi for a while before I bought it, but the one thing that finally sold it to me is one game. A game that I couldn't wait any longer to see if it was coming to the Switch or not, and that is Genshin Impact. I play it on the PC and it is very addicting. <laughs> I wanted a way to play it on handheld, again just my preferred way of gaming, and the cool thing about it is that the PC and iOS versions of the game is actually cross-save compatible, so I can just pick up where I left off either on my iPhone or on the PC. So that is the first game I recommend. For those that don't know this game, Genshin Impact is an open world action RPG. It's about these twins, a girl and a boy, and you get to choose which one you want to play as, they become separated by an unknown god and you wake up 500 years later where you start your adventure and your search for your sister or brother. The game has a gotcha system where you can wish for a character or even a weapon that you want and other things. It might really really tempt you to spend money but I'm here to say that I've played this game completely free so far and I personally find that, you know, besides me not playing as some of the characters that I might want, it hasn't really changed the experience of the game for me. The story is still all there and the same for everybody. I think this game is pretty well written and humorous, the world is beautiful and it might might remind you of Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, among with some other gameplay elements, but besides that, it's actually quite a different game, and one that I highly recommend if you haven't tried it already. Another game I like playing on my phone with a Kishi is Stardew Valley. You've probably heard me rave about this game already in one of my Cozy Games video, and this game is pretty much playable on all platforms now, I think, and I will recommend it over and over again because it's just, it's a beautiful game. <laughs> it's a a farming life sim with nice pixel art style graphics and lovable characters. For the most part, it does everything that you might expect from a farming sim, but there's just so much charm and replayability in this game. The creator still constantly puts out content updates for free, so there's always something new to come back to every time. Other cozy games worth mentioning include Figment, which is a musical action adventure set in a version of the human mind, so it's like a figment of your imagination. Gris is a game about a young woman and her journey through sorrow. It's a beautiful and heartfelt game that, as you progress through the story, can mean different things to different players, which make it even more special. The Last Campfire, which is a puzzle adventure about a lost ember trying to search for his way home and lastly Forager which is a very <laughs> addicting 2D style game with farming, crafting, gathering and all of the above. <laughs> Another game that I've played on my iPhone thanks to the Kishi is a game that doesn't need any introduction and that is Minecraft. It can also be played pretty much anywhere and it is a survival game with crafting, building, fighting monsters, and more. There's multiplayer and you can pretty much play this game however you want if you want to work on the story or you just want to spend your time building beautiful structures, completely up to you. I do like having it on my phone because it's one of the games that I just like popping into sometimes for a few minutes and it makes it very convenient. And if fighting games are more your style, then Brawlhalla is something I've recommended in my free Nintendo Switch games video. It's also on iOS. It plays very much like Smash Bros and it's got a rotating selection of characters. This game actually has all platform crossplay, which means you can play with people on Switch, PC, PlayStation, Xbox, and I think Android as well. But that's pretty amazing. If you want me to make another video just talking about more of my favorite mobile games, please let me know down below and also let me know what your favorite mobile games are. I am obviously newer to the mobile game space, so I'm sure there are lots that I'm missing out on. I'd love to check them all out. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.